in the next uh, couple miles. We're gonna go pick up the uh, stuff for the car. Well, the spacing between my video releases are getting larger and larger. So that means one of two things. Either A, I am getting really terrible at filming my videos and super lazy, or I my cars are running fantastic, which this is not what the video is about to be about because it is in the garage and it's gonna be for a while. So there will be videos on it, but Essentially, that means it is definitely the I'm getting lazy at filming. Aside from that, we are going to Tennessee in, I think, five days now. And there are a lot of things that you have to do to your car before you put this much, I guess, stress on your vehicle. Uh, we're going to be driving like 11 hours um, nonstop. So I need to do a couple updates to the Fiesta, which is what we're taking. I know I haven't showed that in a whole lot of videos, so you're going to see it today. But we recently purchased a 2014 Fiesta. I do know that... Uh, um, taking them on really long trips can beat them up a bit. So there's certain things I want to do to them having experience taking them on long trips before. Uh, but this goes for any vehicle. Um, people take their cars and just drive across the country all the time, uh, not doing anything to it. That can really wear on your car. Um, there are certain things that I personally believe need to be done. I'm going to show you those today. On top of that, we're going to kind of put together what I would consider your necessary tools to have in the trunk of the car. Um, you can't necessarily prepare for everything, but you can be prepared for most things. And so again, this is a personal preference that I have gathered over the last couple of years, um, that there are certain tools you should have with you. There are certain things you should do to your car first. So take it or leave it. That's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you what I purchased. First thing in line here, a uh, cabin air filter and a AC recharge. Now, AC is not going out on the car whatsoever, but in the slight chances we are running low on Freon. I don't need it happening within those 11 hours, um, especially while we're there. Uh, so I wanna do that first. Uh, I wanna make sure that we are able to be plenty cool while driving in and through Tennessee. Um, but the cabin air filter, this is probably one of the most like neglected things on tune-ups. Um, the amount of cars that I've gotten that are 20, 30 years old and have like the original cabin air filter in them is insane. So we're gonna replace that. On top of that, we're gonna do the engine air filter because while we need to cool down, so does the engine. So um, engine air filter, um, also in spark plugs. Now before you Ford enthusiasts freak out that I'm using AC Delco, um, this is what was available. I went through multiple stores and again, I kind of put this off a little bit. I could have gotten some NGKs or I even could have gotten some Ford Motorcraft. Um, AC Delco is available. I trust AC Delco. Um, typically they're used for GMs, but they do have them available for all other cars. We're going with AC Delcos. Now I did get Ford Motorcraft um, uh, oil and our oil filter. So obviously an oil change. We are about 4,000 miles into our oil change right now. Uh, in my personal opinion, before driving it this long, it needs an oil change because it's gonna need one by the time we're there. All right, so we're gonna start with our oil change and I'm gonna pull the oil cap along with the oil dipstick. Uh, what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow for better flow just to get that old oil out of there. Now, if you are working on a Mark VI Fiesta like I am today, the oil drain plug is gonna be a 13 millimeter. Next, we're gonna take off our oil filter that was put on way too tight by the dealership. 
So as soon as we get this off though, we're gonna go ahead and prepare our new Ford Motorsport oil filter. I wanted to stay consistent with the oil, so uh, we went with that brand. Now, some people like to fill these with oil when they start. All I do is take a little bit of oil, rub it around that gasket, just to make sure that we create a proper seal. Uh, now this is also just a personal preference. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the mileage off the dash and I'm gonna hop up underneath the car and we're gonna write down that 84,000 miles just in case for some reason I ever forgot uh, when the last time we did an oil change was, it's gonna be right on the filter uh, just as a good reminder. Now that we got our tools all cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and start filling the oil. I like to consistently check the level of the oil, uh, especially if you don't know exactly how much needs to go in. Uh, you don't wanna just dump a whole four to five quarts in and find out that you overfilled. Once you find a good level, we're good to go. Now, one thing I couldn't stress enough is anytime you do any kind of fluid changes, especially an oil change, you always check underneath a couple times just to make sure you're not dripping anything. Everything's properly sealed and you're not gonna be losing any oil. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to our engine air filter. Now, typically to get the air box open, it's just secured with a couple of latches and no tools are needed at all. Um, in this case, I just needed a T20 to go ahead and pull out four bolts. Once those bolts are out, we can lift the cap off of the air box pull out our air filter. And I will say this is definitely not a terrible air filter. Um, definitely not the worst I've seen, but for an eight to $10 upgrade, it's totally worth helping the engine breathe better, especially before a long trip. Now, when putting the new one in, just reverse engineer what you already did taking the old one out, put your four bolts back in and you'll be all set. All right, before I move on to the next thing, which is gonna be uh, spark plugs, my huge disclaimer, please save yourself and always disconnect your battery whenever you're about to do any kind of electrical work. That could be radio, that could be wiring harnesses, that could be your seats where you're pulling airbag sensors and stuff like that. Anything that could cause any kind of issue because something is touched um, or you could worst case scenario electrocute yourself, always remove that probability by getting rid of your battery connection. So always disconnect the battery before any electrical work. Now next you're gonna be looking for the proper spark plug socket. Now what that is, is it's a special socket that has a rubber boot inside of it uh, that latches onto the spark plug. So once you actually unscrew that spark plug out of the engine, it's gonna stick inside of that boot uh, until you actually pull it out. That basically makes sure that it doesn't drop back inside the engine. Same goes for when you're putting it in, you can make sure you're not cross-threading and you're putting it exactly where you want it. Now you're gonna start out by pulling those boots out Set that socket down in there without the ratchet. Make sure it's fitted on perfectly. Go ahead and put that ratchet on there. And you're ready to pull your spark plugs out. Now, if this is your first time attempting the spark plug replacement process, I am going to link a video in the description specifically for you, one in which we took a way more in-depth approach on how to do this process properly. And so if you are doing this for the first time, you want some more information, that's down there just for you. Now something else to check before your long road trip that's very important is your brake fluid. Make sure it's not all gross and gunky inside of there. Also make sure if you do have to top it off, you're using the recommended type that is listed on that cap. Also make sure you top off that bug juice. You'll be looking out that windshield for 11 hours. You want it to be clean. Oops.
I'm using de-icer. I know that's a little overkill for the 80 degree weather, but I had about 10 bottles on clearance, so we're gonna use that. Also, make sure you're topping off your coolant. Now, if you need to do that, just like any other fluid, make sure you're using the proper type that is recommended for your specific engine. So we're gonna jump right into that cabin air filter, that thing I told you is the most neglected when it comes to vehicle tune-ups. I personally have not changed many of these in my lifetime, I will be honest. On the Fiesta specifically, uh, it is on the passenger side on the floor next to your left foot. We're gonna pull this panel out of the way and we'll have access to that cabin air filter. Now it looks like we have a harness to pull out of the way, so make sure you're watching for those so you don't accidentally rip anything. And we had four T20 bolts to go ahead and pull out. I can already tell this is not looking great. Look at how disgusting that is. Oh my gosh. I honestly was not expecting it to be nearly that bad, but just like the engine air filter, this is an eight to $10 upgrade that is totally worth doing. As you can tell, we are gonna be breathing much nicer inside the Fiesta on our 11 hour car ride. Just like the engine air filter, we're just gonna reverse engineer what we did, just toss that thing back in, put the bolts in, make sure we hook up our harness and we will be in business. Now the last step in this process is to go ahead and put that panel back in. Now when it comes to interior panels on vehicles, I have the worst luck. The world is against me. I break clips so easy, it's not even funny. In this case, we got it back in just fine. No issue here. Next step is to go ahead and recharge our Freon inside of our vehicle. Now, the same way that the coolant keeps the engine cool, this Freon is gonna keep us cool when we are going to Tennessee, as I've already mentioned about 80,000 times in this video. Now, when you are recharging your AC, you wanna turn on your vehicle, you wanna crank your AC, so make sure it's all the way cool, your fans are all the way cranked up while you are doing this process. What you're gonna do is you're gonna open your high side valve. Typically, those are labeled, there's two of them. One will have an L, one will have an H. Now your Freon canister should have an attachment that hooks onto only one of them. It will be your high side. Now simply hold that button until the gauge indicates that it is full. Let's check our alternator output. Now with the vehicle turned off, positive to positive and negative to negative on our battery with our meter, we should see 11 to 12 volts. Now, once we turn the vehicle on, that 11 to 12 volts should jump anywhere between 13 and 15 volts. Anything inside of that, our alternator is pushing enough energy to charge our battery during our trip. Woo, with some cold air. All right, we are going to take this for our test drive just to make sure everything's feeling all right. On top of that, we're gonna run by Harbor Freight, grab a couple things for our, I guess, accessories that we're going to bring with us um, to Tennessee in the trunk. So like I said, I had a list of tools I like to bring with me. Um, we're going to grab a couple things. So let's do it. Starting with the most important tool, that's going to be your spare tire, your lug nut wrench, and your jack. Now, moving on to our crate of tools, I'm gonna to start out with some fluids. We're gonna start out with our antifreeze, and then we're gonna add a little bit of extra engine oil. Now, some of the cleaners that I like to have with me are throttle body and also MAF sensor cleaner. Now, those are two things that can possibly throw issues in a long trip where you're putting a lot of stress on the vehicle. So if I can't get those parts on the side of the road, I at least wanna be able to clean them in a pinch. On top of that, we're gonna to toss in some hose clamps. We're also going to add our ratchets and socket set. I prefer to always keep at least one tie down or ratchet strap inside of this kit. And of course, what is a proper toolbox without zip ties? Now I like to have at least a couple of rolls of electrical tape and we can't forget the gloves. And then in worst case scenario, the spare tire isn't enough. I want to have a tire repair kit and then having a plethora of fuses and also wire connectors is never a bad idea. 
And then of course you gotta have your wire, your wire strippers, and an electrical tester that looks like it came out of a Kellogg cereal box. My dad told me to never leave home without a multi-tool, add some needle nose pliers, and a couple of screwdrivers, multiple screwdriver bits, an adjustable wrench, and of course a flashlight. Funnels, just in case we have to top off some fluids, don't wanna spill stuff everywhere, right? And then last but not least, we got a tire gauge. Now this is fully self-preference. I like to have this light. Now what it does is it hooks right into your 12 volt. Uh, in case you were in the situation where you're pulled over on the side of the road at night, I wanna make sure plenty of people see me. I got my wife and my kiddo in the car. Safety comes first. Well, that was not very cool in the daylight. At night, it is super bright, so take my word for it. I'm gonna put that inside of our box as well. Also, make sure you have some jumper cables and the slight chance that you do need a jump because you aren't getting enough energy to your battery. Also, having an OBD2 scanner if you have a car at 1996 or newer. We're gonna toss all that right in the back of the vehicle and we should be good to go. As I said before, a lot of this stuff is all personal preference. Like this is just the things over the last couple of years I've decided are a good idea to have with me on a long road trip. Um, there are a couple of things I didn't mention, one being a 12 volt um, tire pump. Now, if you know that your rims are bent or your tires aren't you know, the greatest and you do add air every once in a while, chances are on an 11 hour car ride, you're gonna have to fill up. Um, you don't wanna rely on a gas station, you don't wanna rely on a tire shop, especially if you're gonna be on a lot of highway, especially if you're driving through the middle of the night like we are. Um, you wanna be able to stop and just fill up and go. Now, if your tires are in that kind of condition, I wouldn't recommend going on those. Uh, you might wanna address those first, but I personally just like to have it with me because that is a safety blanket of being able to fill a tire. Um, on top of that, you're obviously wondering where's the duct tape. Uh, I will have some, I just didn't have any with me right now. I need to go pick some up. Uh, if you have an automatic transmission vehicle, having ATF with you is good. Um, your transmission very well could overheat. You could have issues like that. Um, you're going to want some fluids for your transmission as well. Those are very, very important. So ATF is a really good idea to have with you if you have an automatic transmission. I personally do not when it comes to the Fiesta, so don't need that. Um, otherwise, totally up to you guys. That's about all I got for you. So it's been fun making another video. It's been a while. I gotta go buy some duct tape. So, see ya. <clears throat>